So the drainage ditch on the road, I initially had, when we moved in, with this sort of flood down here on the roadway, um, so I actually put a culvert in that taps into, goes in between these trees, somehow miraculously, I dug a channel and laid 40 feet of culvert over to this, the bog, and the bog uh, is the first filter for the water, and it has a, a trap, basically, a siphon trap that feeds into that pond, so all of the oil sediment that would be on the top of the water will not be able to pass through to that pond. It'll just soak into the surface sediment of this as it evaporates. This is actually really shallow. It's probably only two feet deep, and usually the water evaporates within a few weeks uh, of just sitting there if there hasn't been any rain, whereas the pond takes a little bit longer. And it has been part of my expansion pond project that I'm working on the last couple weeks. Uh, this is actually the actual drainage, and it goes between me and this adjacent property here. And it's a pretty wide corridor that's not really that deep. And you can see, actually, these posts are four-foot posts, and I've graded my lot up this way. Uh, so this would have gone down that way. So we're up probably about two and a half, three feet over uh, where this would have been in order to maintain all of the water onto my property because I have the largest retention pond to be able to hold this water uh, in case of storms and otherwise uh, flooding events. Uh, you can see the water in the little canal between me and the neighbor there. But this was the initial pond and eventually I wanted to make these this set of trees and that set of trees into basically an island uh, this one I decided against making it a true island, and I'm connecting it here so I can actually walk out to it, because this will be a fairly large set of trees here, um, and then it helps me in the construction process of how I'm building this. This here at deepest, I think it's about eight and a half, nine feet over in that corner there, uh, and I did this with the excavator on the back, and I pulled all the material out and put it in a giant pile, and then had to take the tractor and then move it to somewhere else where I've been using it, um, and then this time around, when I decided to do this expansion, this is taking a little bit longer to dig because I'm scooping it out with just the bucket of the tractor and I'm then bringing it to its end destination and grading it into what is now a little pathway or roadway. And you can see this water is a little bit taller than that by about two and a half feet. And that's just because I haven't put the two connected yet. This is still its own body of water with no connection to the other side. This is my entry point. I originally came in through there and dug out to this section and came out here and then dug out all the way to that section. And that allowed me to back up and then drive out. Now this one's getting a little too steep. So now what I'm doing is coming in from here and this I dug all the way down to water level. So it's about six feet deep over on this end. And you can't really drive on that with the tractor. Otherwise you get in a little bit of sticky mess. This side on that's six feet up to about here so once this evaporates or dries up or whatnot, uh, I'll start digging this whole section at six feet and then loop it back and connect it to that side of the pond over there, which I'll show you in a second, just so that they'll have one continued depth at about six feet. And this will continue as a ramp, but I do require a pretty good long dry period to do this work. Uh, so I can't do it all at once. I don't have that much time available to me. Uh, so I'll do this mini U-shape section first, and then I'll come back and I'll do this expansion up on the upper edge, which will cut all the way in around this. And you can see where I started cutting there, and it will bring it all the way around here. So this little set of trees will be an island all to itself. That one will basically be an island, less that little catwalk. Then over here, this will be the outside edge of the pond here. There'll be a little connecting point, and I've already cleared this little section here. You can kind of see the path through the center here. This will be the stream, which I'll have lead down into. There's a low-lying area at the back of all of these properties, or mine, and this adjacent property over here, which leads into the marsh of this area. This is a marsh land behind us, and it actually always has water in it, which is great because it's actually a great source for water for all my needs. Wow, look at this guy, he's huge. Whoa, 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 he's mad. Sorry about that, buddy. I'm not gonna bump you. Keep getting mosquitoes, I promise we're friends. Um, but you can see here the water in that area is, um, that's permanently there. I did not wanna focus. Uh, this is always wet back here. This is like a stream, but it doesn't move, so it's basically a marsh. 
Um, that dog is very excited this morning. But needless to say, and this will be the little stream as it comes through, and I'll make this a series of leveled um, pools that will come down and like stay steps effectively so that it will always have a slow trickle as it feeds out. So as the pond is overbared with water, it will make a nice little trickling sound because, you know, acoustics of water are important when you're building water features, or at least for me. I like aesthetics, I like the sounds, I like all the things. So that is on this update what we're kind of going over. And you can see here, I started digging this, and this is where I got down to probably about four, four and a half feet on this side. Um, and I still have about two, two and a half feet to go to dig this all the way out and then dig this section out that will connect this, which you can see it almost made it over there, but it's just shy of that. So dig all that out and that will make my giant, what will be almost like an ampersand or a figure eight style pond series back here. And I'll put some gypsum in and seal it and then I'll stock it with all my little fishies as need be. I already have quite a few turtles in there, so they've been having a great time. And where that material has been going, I just did an update, I think it was only like a week ago, uh, but luckily I've had nice dry weather for about a week, which means that I'm able to put that time into building the next steps of this little roadway, which I've completed the majority of. So you can see it's a little bit taller here, probably about six inches on this side. This is really slick because I just put it down and it just poured rain. And as you come up through here, now we're kind of gaining an elevation, gaining an elevation. And we're standing about four and a half feet over the regular ground level. And these posts I had set in in concrete footings um, and then just left them standing. I knew that this is where this would be. So I pre-planned all those and kind of put this up here. This will have a gate here, and I'll continue the fence back to there. Might even put a couple uh, single strands over the edge just so I don't get any little deer or doggies jumping. Not that I think they will, but prevention is the best measure. So yeah, all this material. From what I assumed, I probably moved over the course of about, uh, I think it was five days, and then the weekend I put in another like 10 hours but it's about 30 yards worth of material or so uh, that I moved up in in here. This wasn't even connected as of last week. Um, and it was much, much, much shorter. And then this, as you can see, kind of drops dramatically. So as that other material comes out, I'll slowly grade this out until it comes to nearly ground level over here. So this will have a pretty large amount of fill that would be required to do this. And because there's no requirement for this grade angle to be anything specific, that'll give me the variability to remove that material from the pond and not have to worry about like how much I'll have left over. I'll be able to fill the rest of that in and then just gradually make this, you know, whatever, three inches taller or three inches shorter, depending on how much material I have. And uh, that's the end of the pond update. What do you think, Ty? Yeah.